Good morning or good afternoon kindergartners and welcome to our remote week for art. This week we're going to take a break from our farms, if you started your farms with me, and we're going to do a project about deciduous trees. Now if that sounds some if that word sounds familiar, it's because in class you have learned about deciduous trees. And if you remember, deciduous trees are the ones that lose their leaves in the fall and hibernate for the winter. So we're going to be doing a deciduous tree forest that is changing kind of like how the leaves were changing now or just a little bit ago. And we're going to be using line to create interesting different trees. We're also going to be using texture, the way things feel, to create some interesting textures in our trees. And for our colors, we're going to be using a lot of warm colors because usually the leaves will turn things like red, orange, and yellow, and then eventually brown, which is a neutral color, but tends to be kind of warm. And we're going to be making an artistic version of a forest of deciduous trees. All right, for this project, I'm going to be using crayons and a Sharpie. If you just have crayons, um, you can do this part with a black crayon instead of a Sharpie. And you need a piece of paper that is wide or landscape. It's called landscape because usually it's wider than it is taller. Once you have that, let's go ahead and draw some trees. Now, trees grow from the bottom. So we're gonna start most of our trunks from the bottom. And then we're going to draw different kinds of branches using different kinds of lines. So how about we start from the left side and a little bit inward I want you to draw a line that goes not quite at the bottom and doesn't quite touch the top so there's a little bit of room on both sides after that we need another line next to it very very close this is our tree trunk and then see how it touches the line at the top You can go ahead and color this trunk in or add lines to it to make it look a little bit thick. Now for the branches. These aren't quite gonna be realistic trees, but we're going to experiment with different kinds of lines. So for this one, let's do some straight lines. So from the middle of your tree, I want you to draw some lines that go straight out, um, but kind of actually a little, a little bit of an angle. So let's point these a little bit up. So with your Sharpie or your crayon, do some lines that are next to each other that go up the tree like this. You want to do it on both sides so that your tree looks like it has thickness to it. And it's okay if some of the branches are different sizes because in real life, trees would have branches that are different shapes and sizes. All right, let's give our next tree a little bit of room. So next to your tree, give it a little bit of room and then we're gonna make another trunk. You can make it thick again. So now that we've used straight lines, let's go ahead and use some curved lines. But we're gonna make a kind of strange kind of curved line. So what I want you to do is I want you to make a line that kind of s swirls like a spiral. So start at your tree, kind of in the middle. And then I want you to make a spiral line. Get smaller and smaller and smaller towards the middle. So it kind of looks like a snail on a stick.
All right, let's do another tree. So leave a little space. And it's okay if your trees overlap a little bit because in real life trees would overlap. So we have our trunk. And this time we're gonna do curved lines starting about here, so about a quarter of the way up. And they're gonna curve kind of like little U's or the sides of U's. So let's have them go like this. Curve up, curve up, like that. And then let's add branches to them. So on each one, somewhere in the middle, add another curve. You can add one curve or more than one if you want, but they look like kind of little Y's now coming out of the middle of the tree. If you want to add more curves, you can do that too. It's up to you. As long as they grow from one branch and then whoop, curve up. give these curves a little bit of character. What about the end of each one? You made a dot. And see how I did some curves underneath this one so that way it filled that space a little bit more. So we've done straight lines, we've done like a fixed spiral line, we've done curved lines. What if we did a zigzag line? So let's do one more tree over here. If you have more space, you can do more trees if you want to. And this one, hmm. Let's do some zigzag lines. So I think instead of just a normal zigzag line, let's do a few that cross each other. So kind of how like this one has lines coming out. Let's do ones that go all the way across. So watch first. I'm gonna start kind of low. And what if I did a zigzag line that did this? all the way to the top. And then one of my zigzag lines had other zigzag lines, little zigzag lines coming out. So make trees that fill your paper, and then we're gonna use warm colors. So as you're waiting for the next part, you can get some warm colors up. But try to fill your paper with different trees that are really tall, that have different kinds of lines. So like here I could do like another spiral if I wanted to. Like a little branch. All right. So if you're not done, go ahead and pause now. I'm going to start coloring my trees. And I think I'm going to do them in order. So I'm going to do a red tree, an orange tree, a yellow tree. And then after th I'm going to decide which kind of color tree I want here. But these are deciduous trees. Um, so they have to change colors. And the second thing I want to do, I'll show you just in a second, is we're going to add some texture to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is for my tree, I want to kind of outline where the edge of my tree is going to be, where my color is going to stop. And 
And then for this tree, I'm just gonna color it normally. Trying to color inside my lines neatly. No white spots, trying to make it nice and even. Yours doesn't have to be the same colors order as mine, but you should only use warm colors. Right, for my second tree. And just to remind us of colors, warm colors are these. But I also want to add some texture. Now this is optional, but it's always fun to find different textures around your house. So what I'm gonna do is not just color this in, but put something under it to create a texture. So that way when I color in my orange tree, it also has some sort of texture behind it, making it look interesting. And if it overlaps the red tree a little bit, that's okay. These trees will probably overlap. And now it has an interesting texture. For yours, you might have to move around to find some texture. I'm gonna to try to find textures that I can put up here so you can see them. My yellow tree is gonna be next. So I'm going to kind of make a line that goes around my yellow tree and it's gonna to touch this one, which is okay. And I'm gonna go around it like that. So see how it floats around my lines and it's okay that it touches that one. And then I need to find some more texture. Once again, texture is optional, but if you wanna do it, it's a cool effect. I think I can use this wire basket. Let's see if I can rub some texture from this wire basket. Might be kind of hard to see in yellow. trees. If I had more than four trees, I might do a red again or an orange or yellow, but I think I'm going to use a neutral. So brown is a neutral color, but deciduous trees do turn brown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line around my last tree. Remember if it runs into the other one, you can stop and then this will be what I color in. There we go. And then I can color in this with the brown, my neutral color. Let me see if I can find one more texture. Aha, uh -huh. kind of strange, but I can use that as a texture. Very weird square tree, but hey, this is art doesn't have to be exactly like reality and it can be kind of strange. All right. And there you go. There are my four deciduous trees using different kinds of texture, using warm colors, 
and using creative expressive lines. Remember your trees don't have to look like mine and I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of creative lines you use and creative textures you might find in your trees.